tale has been sung by bards and minstrels down through the centuries. The legend of Gawain and the Green Knight. Long ago, when pagan gods haunted the world and good men longed for miracles, there towered upon a craggy cliff by a winter sea the rugged fortress of Camelot. Many years had passed since founding the Round Table. War had ceased and the land secured. The knights grew slack and settled, chivalry declined, and the ideals of knighthood fell into neglect. Only Gawain, a humble squire, prayed for knightly glory and adventure. King Arthur feared for his realm, and as the old year waned, he summoned his knights to a feast. A feast he would make sure they would never forget. Take it away. Take it all away! I am not hungry. In fact, this whole feast turns my stomach. And so, to speak God's truth to you, not yet. We have feasted too much of late years. We have quenched our knighthood with too many cups of wine. Therefore, tonight, not one crust of bread, not one mouthful of wine, until I know that the men I feast with are still deservant of the name of knight. a feast, and yet an empty throne? You may have found a castle with its guards asleep, but not a court without a king. By this staff, great king, you may know I come in peace. All I seek is good sport. And the axe would suggest the sport. Single combat to the death. <laughs> it is Yuletide, and the old year is dying to make way for the new. I propose a game more in keeping with the season. Here is my axe. Feel it! Huh? <laughs> it's a heavy instrument. But true, and for sharpness, the east wind is not its equal. <laughs> Sirs, I offer it to you. I shall kneel here with neck bare for any man who dares the deed. To hack my head from off my shoulders. Come, take up the axe. There is no trick. I will not flinch away or seek to defend myself. I will kneel here, ready for the blow. Ah, uh, one blow and no more. All I ask is that afterwards, I shall be allowed to return it in a like manner. <laughs> it's a simple game. A cut for a cut. Is there no man among you who will play my game? What kind of court is this, huh? Where 
Where is your pride? Your prowess? Your courage? <laughs> I'm waiting. My neck grows cold. If you are so firmly set on seeking folly, then by heaven you shall find it. I will take the axe myself and bestow the boon you claim of us. My liege. What are you doing, you young fool? My liege. Give me the game. Let the cut be mine. I will have quiet! A while since I doubted your right still to be called knights. Now, God help us all, I see there is no longer any room for doubt. Only one man in the court had the courage to take up the challenge. And since he is but a humble squire, let him come here. Arise a knight, Sir Gawain. Now the challenge is accepted. Young Gawain, you have but the one blow. Take care, there is no chance afterwards of its being returned to you. Sir Knight, it may be too late after I've dealt my blow for you to tell us your name and your home. You know of me all you have need to know. Come, let the game begin. I came to challenge a man, not a boy. And a sorry thing it would be to slay one so young. Because you are green and unschooled, and to humble those whose courage could not rise to my challenge. I give you another year's grace to grow your beard. Another 12 months of life to do with as you will. And if you choose to spend them seeking me, and find me before the year is out. I give you leave to challenge me to any form of combat that you will. But mark, when four seasons have passed and you find me not, then I will claim my right to an undefended blow. Where will I know where to find you? If you do not find me, 
I will send you guides and counselors, signs and portents to set you on the right path. And this shall be a sign unto you. The advent of green proclaims that I am at hand. Bright green is the mark of your deliverance. Gawain resolved not to pass the year in idleness, but to set out at once with Humphrey, his squire, in quest of the Green Knight. Weapons, armor, horses, all had to be borrowed from the king. The loan to be redeemed only by the success of his mission. Failure would bring death. What adventure lay ahead? Could the supernatural power of the Green Knight be overcome by a beardless boy? Gawain left Camelot a green youth, determined to return a man. Seldom resting, sparing neither horse or man, he searched from dawn till dusk. Stealthily the seasons changed, and the delicate hues of spring stirred the land deep in winter somnolence. Could the budding green of spring herald the hour of combat with his mysterious foe? Gawain hoped the time was surely near. A sign, the Green Knight. and be welcome. This is a trick. You need fear no treachery at my hands. What then are the signs I have been following? Patience, young hot blood. Here is a haven. Rest and you will learn in time. I have no need to tarry. My way is clear. I need only find the Green Knight. Sir Gawain, I know nothing of the signs that led you here. I know nothing of this knight you seek. Yet, in so strange a quest, no trail is too strange to follow. Young man, ride on. Let your horse's shadows fall behind you, but ride on still. At the sea's edge, 
you will come upon the grotto of the green stone. There you will find the spring, a chalice, and a green stone. Take the water to the stone. commit a crime against me. What does he mean? I am protector of this grotto. I beg your forgiveness. You have violated our sacred spring. I couldn't know the storm would come. By your evil act, you have brought down the torrents of heaven. I have no quarrel with you, sir. You have defiled the spring from which our land of Leoness draws sustenance. Stand to your arms!
the goodly charger cantered on, a warrior's horse bearing faithfully to the end its dying master. Gawain had inflicted a mortal wound. Black Knight approaches! Open the gates! Black Knight, by grace of God, Lord of Leoness, protector of the Grotto of the Green Stone, was dead. His good wife, the Lady of Leoness mourned the passing of her beloved spouse and vowed vengeance. Revenge. I will be revenged. We must search for the villain who slew my noble lord. My lady, do not send forth your men at arms. There is no need to search for this man. How dare you even think of such a thing? He will come to us. the stone in your hand so long as you hide the stone it like you it has magic powers to change all things but beware not to drop it as soon as the gates are opened follow me saved my life and I don't even know your name. I'm called Linnet. Oh, does it hurt very much? I must bind it. Sweet Linnet, why are you doing this for me? I'm an enemy of your land. I know only that you needed my help and that you need it still. It's just that it was as though you were expecting me. Yes, I was expecting you. So you knew of my coming? Yes. I've always known it. I've always known that once within these walls you'd be in sore peril of your life. And I must use my ring to save you. And then? Do you not know what land this is that you have entered? No. This is Leoness. The lost land of Leoness. Lost. In the wilderness of past dreams and ages yet to come. The king. 
kingdom mourns. The Black Knight? Why? Why was he wearing a green plume? Green is the color of elfin kind. Spring's resurrection. The color of the dead. No other knight in this world carries that color on his crest. Then it was he. Three days ago, a knight dressed in green crossed the path of our protector. And he, when challenged to fight, refused the pay tribute with one of his own green plumes. I told my master it would bring him ill fortune to wear it. And I was right. The green knight. I must find him. I must play out the game. Linnet? Linnet? I will not listen. Please hear me out. You have been hiding him. That's why he's not been found. Admit it. No, you don't understand. Yes. Yes. Treason indeed. I'll have your head for this. Guards! Guards! I submit myself to your mercy. For I am the knight you seek. You may withdraw. I meant no harm to your lord. I swear to God I was tricked into that killing. And I humbly beg your forgiveness. Mm. Forgive me, child. I have misjudged your purpose. I see now that you sheltered this valiant knight from the highest of motives. The welfare of our land of Leoness. Who better to be the new defender of our spring? Come. I will call a meeting of the Royal Council and summon my bishops tonight. As soon as my lord has been given burial. Lady, forgive us for having broken into your mourning. Oh, why should I mourn? My late husband was a terrible man. From our marriage night, he proved a most cruel tyrant. He bled the very people he should have protected. And what is more far worse, he treated me like a hedgerow hag. No tenderness, no respect. No, I cannot speak of it. And the wenching, and the drinking. Many is the morning I have buckled on his armor with my own hands because I was ashamed for his squires to see his sorry state. <laughs> you cannot know what I have suffered all these years. But now everything is changed. We have a true champion to defend the kingdom and be my husband. What have I done? It was no fault of yours. I just wanted you to stay in Leoness. You truly wanted me to stay. Oh, Lynette. And I've done you nothing but harm. And now you've got to go, and quickly, if you could win free of the castle. I will not go without you. You cannot know what you're saying. There must be some way of escape. For you. But you must go alone. Do you, do you not want to go with me? I do. Yeah, you do. do. As I knew that one day you would come, as I knew that one day I would save you.
over there. Peace. I come in peace. Where are you traveling? We are pilgrims. We have been traveling for many years, for all time, it seems. But our wandering continues. In your wanderings, did any one of you see a fair maiden wearing a ring in which was set a strange stone? No. No. Or the knight, garbed all in green. Green-haired and bearded, with eyes of green fire and ice. Once seen, one would never forget such a one. Indeed, one would not, my son. What vexing questions for one so young. Then what shall I do? Come with us, my son. I am bound by another quest. I must find my own way. Bereft of his enchanting linnet, and with no comrade to cheer him, Gawain tramped the vagrant byways resolute upon his quest. Grey spring yielded to bleak summer, a summer of dust and drought, a glaring summer without solace for the valiant young knight. Come harvest time, tidings reached him that many leagues to the north there dwelt the wisest of wise men who favoured garments trimmed with green. But some claimed that he was the greatest of fools to sport the colour of the elfin kind. 
such dubious fame Gawain could only read as a portent of the Green Knight. Is anybody there? Who is it? And whom do you come seeking? I come seeking the wise man. And you have found him? <laughs> I say, and you have found him. You have been long on your journey, Sir Gawain. If you know so much of me, can you tell me where I can find the Green Knight whom ah. I seek? The Green Knight? I, I know all about the Green Knight. I know of the challenge between you, and I know that you will meet him at a green chapel when the time falls due. I truly, <laughs> I know all about that. <laughs> at last. Oh, wisest of wise men, can you tell me the road to this green chapel? Yeah, yeah, that is the thing beyond my telling. But you said that I knew of your challenge and your meeting at the green chapel. One is a thing of the past. The other is yet to come. I know all things of the past and most things of the future. But what you ask me is of the present. And the present is the one thing in all the world of which I know absolutely nothing. But you said... When you come to think of it, perhaps that's why men call me the fool. Good day. I will send you guides and counselors, signs and portents to set you on the right path.
Leoness. Humphrey! Ooh! Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Where have you been, eh? I searched for you. I tried to find you, but you disappeared. Lynnet pondered upon her strange dream of the Green Knight and the finding of the Green Sash. She was not aware that danger approached from the domain of the robber Baron Fortinbras. To the eyes of his devious seneschal, and to Oswald, the Baron's scapegrace son, a defenceless maid was always a desirable conquest. Thank you. 
least ten of them. Maybe more nearby. These knaves, the best you can find? My lord, these are the only ones who were fit enough. Then they'll have to do. Stand proud! For today, to join the army of his most exultant highness, the Baron Fosimbras. Don't you know how to use a sword better than that? No. Show me. You see, a sword is three foot of tempered steel with death dancing at every inch and hanging like a dark star on the very point. You don't wield it like a broomstick. But so! Your pupils learn quickly, no doubt due to your excellent teaching. I think perhaps it is time for an even sterner exercise, for the pardons. That should show us what stuff our young warrior is made of. Hey! 
you. Young man, you must defend that position against any and all comers from this time until sunset. Take care you don't disappoint us. happy occasion have I interrupted? The combat to the death? My lord, these men found guilty of gross insubordination to your high office. We decided quite naturally one must pay with his life. <laughs> well done, good Seneschal, well done. But our bellies are howling with hunger after our long journey, and death sits not easy on an empty stomach. <laughs> First let us feast. Let these wretches join our feast. Let them eat their fill on this day, our last day on earth. And then the trail declared he owed his loyalty to Bertrand. <laughs> when I said I'd have his head for that, he fled. <laughs> Father, I, I want oh, a word. Come, my boy. Let's have a boy. Let's have a boy. Let's have some entertainment. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Bring on the fatty cars! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> 
My lord! What? My lord, what is it? Sir Bertilac and his retinue are outside the gates. <laughs> Sir Bertilac wishes parley with you. Let him enter. We are indeed honored with such an august presence. I did not come here to dally with you. Your ceaseless raiding into my western provinces must stop. From this day forward, my people must be safe. Your provinces. This land is mine! Then it is war. Sir Bertilac, perhaps another way may be found to settle our differences. Wars, after all, are such a clumsy way to settle anything. We can offer in exchange for this desolate swampland a prize which fortune has found fit to strew among our paths. A treasure worth a dozen provinces. It is a maiden, so fair, she would put even the silvery moon to shame. Ha, ha, ha. 
Wayne. You must know I share your sorrow. We must keep moving. They'll be looking for us everywhere. And we must find some horses. And these clothes, they could easily recognize us. Gawain, quickly, we must hurry. No, Humphrey. I can't. It's no good. I can't go on. Well, you just can't sit there and let them take you. I'd as soon. What I'm going to live for. Well, we'll find something later on, but for now it's enough to keep moving. Look, come on, man, come to your senses. Oh, get off! For God's sake, get off! I'll go my own way. Gawain! Now was his ordeal ever more arduous haunted by a nightmare of his fair enchantress consumed by flames, Gawain deserted the trail of the Green Knight and, in sore distress, roamed the desolate places without hope or aim. All that somber fall he wandered, half slain by autumn gales that bared the trees. Green leaves yellowed, turned russet brown, a sign to Gawain's fevered mind that his adversary also had abandoned the game. Anybody there, let me in. Please, God, in the name of charity, let me in. In the name of Christian charity, let me in. Disturbing a good man. Bah! Off with you. We have no truck with beggars in this court. Oh, indeed. Good man. I'm a knight, not a beggar. I've travelled very far. Take me to your master. You, a knight? <laughs> Take you to my master? Let me tell you, he's not so comical minded as me. He just might not see the joke of it. I said. Take me. All right, all right. But let me warn you. Whatever you are, if he finds himself not amused, oh, yes, indeed, you will be the sorry one. Come on. In you go. They're only sleeping off a hard night's drinking. All's well. <laughs> Great. 
great lord. I pray your pardon for disturbing you. I am Gawain. I am a knight and of a noble court. No, I look more fitting to be carrying a staff on a begging bowl. I've journeyed far. I'm sick. I'm sore in need of shelter. Open those shutters there. Young knight, you shall have what you seek, and you shall not leave here till you are made right well again. I bid you welcome, Sir Gawain. Prepare the finest chamber. Meantime, we will to the chapel! This year. I thought it was a fever. Lynette. I've... I've been looking for you for so long. So many places. I've dreamed of you so often. And of having found you. Waking. Always. That same emptiness of loss. <laughs> now you're here. <laughs> oh, God is good. Yes, in his infinite mercy he sent me a protector. So Bertilak brought me out of my captivity. He must have carried you away. That was not the way of it. He found me when I was in peril of my life. <coughs> so Bertilak could have done what he would with me. But he set me free. And he told me that I must stay or go as my heart bade me. And and I thought that I'd lost you for all time, and Sir Bertilak was so kind and good. So I chose to stay. I will take you away. Ah, this makes good seeing. Linnet must have tended you well. For already the life is coming back into you. You're on the mend. Soon you will be well again. Seems that your prayers have been answered. Lynette's affectionate care and the healing herb she gave him by the homely fireside slowly mended Gawain's tortured health. 
Now you look like the Gawain I used to know. Winter was upon them. But not for him the rough and ready Yuletide pleasures. Let Sir Bertilac hunt wild boar, pursue the elusive fox, chase deer in the frosted woods. Gawain would husband his strength, for the hour of his deliverance or death from the green knight was now but one day distant. Take anything you want of me. If we were to kiss, our hearts would fly together and there would be no parting, ever again. Please, anything. And tomorrow, after I'm gone, will not the sorrow be all the more hard for the both of us to bear? And you've maybe only one day left for sorrow. And I shall have many days and days to want you long for you. I love you. I've always loved you. <laughs> Gawain, I want to give you something. Take the sash that I wear on my waist. Wear it tomorrow, and no evil will befall you. Please, take it. <laughs> What magic can overcome the Green Knight? I will wear it as a token of our love for the rest of my life. Glad to see you, Humphrey. I was expecting you. Where were you? I heard the maiden was not dead and in Sir Bertilak's protection. I knew that one day you'd make your way to her. Lilith, go back. You know where I must ride. I ride with you.
think you are the victor. You think that. But soon you shall meet my master. Baron Fortinbras will come. He will come, I tell you. Now, let no man say he can overcome you. And let no man say he can overcome me. I must go, Lynn. Welcome to my dwelling. Kneel and make ready to receive your cut. Think yourself afraid of no man. You who have conquered so many, do you now flinch at the axe? I did not flinch when you let fly your blow, but held as still as the grave. Yet you tremble. Deal me my destiny. It was foolish to dream of glory and knighthood. I was a fool ever to play your game. Now as I have played it, let us bring it to an end. Strike and be done.
strike. had your cut. The game is over. <laughs> you tell me when my game is over. I make the rules. Come. Come. The full circle of the year is turned. And just as every green shoot of spring returns to the earth, so return I. Live on, Sir Gawain. Now Gawain understood the aim of his quest. He had prayed for knighthood, and the nature gods had taken heed. Green Knight was sent to ripen his untutored youth and reveal to him, through trial and ordeal, the mystery of life. To each his seasons, to each his moments of defeat and glory, of loving and losing, of death and joyful rebirth, that his time on this earth might be fulfilled with courage and the purity of heart that befits a man. Thus ends the tale of Gawain and the Green Knight. Coming up 